When I was translating my opinions to Spanish, I was frustrated with the uses of indicative and of subjunctive. I did not know what to use, indicative or subjunctive, when I reached an antecedent or subordinate clause. I wanted to make my Spanish grammar perfect. I did research from Spanish grammar books and from the internet to study the uses of indicative and of subjunctive. Today, I am going to teach you about the uses of indicative and of subjunctive. Indicative is used when it comes to knowledge, to existence, or to proof. Subjunctive is used when it comes to feelings, to pre-existence, or to anonymity. You use subjunctive in the subordinate clause when the main verb is a verb of volition, of emotion. Love is not an emotion, thanks to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Of doubts, of probability, or of opinion. You use subjunctive in the subordinate clause when the main clause is an imperative. You use subjunctive in the subordinate clause for an impersonal expression as long as truth, certainty, or fact is not in the way. If there is truth, certainty, or fact, use indicative in the subordinate clause. I have a list of the following sentence patterns for impersonal expressions and for opposites of impersonal expressions truths certainties and facts Use subjunctive after ohalake because it relates to desire. God is the main subject in the sentence with the phrase ohalake. I have a list of the following translations for ohalake. The solo word ohala means I slash we hope so. You use indicative in the indirect quotations. How do you find an indirect quotation? Indirect quotations are found in the following pattern. We know that a subordinate clause links to a main clause in order to give more information of the sentence. Subordinate clause slash clauses without at least one main clause makes slash make an incomplete sentence, thus using the subjunctive, except for subordinate clauses with subordinate conjunctions that only take the indicative. I have a list of subordinate conjunctions divided into four categories when to use either indicative or subjunctive in the subordinate clause.
the subordinate conjunction C F is a special subordinate conjunction because of its rules. If the tense slash mood in the main clause is present indicative, future indicative, or imperative, the C clause needs a present indicative, thus open condition. If the tense in the main clause is conditional, the C clause needs a imperfect subjunctive, thus remote condition. If the tense slash mood in the main clause is pluperfect subjunctive or conditional perfect, the C clause needs a pluperfect subjunctive, thus unfulfilled condition. The phrase what if translates to the following. The subordinate conjunction como si as if or as though needs Imperfect subjunctive or pluperfect subjunctive in the subordinate clause. If the antecedent is negative, use subjunctive because the existence of the antecedent is rejected. Did you know that there are conjugations for future subjunctive and for future perfect subjunctive they conjugated from third person plural of the preterite indicative and they subtracted the suffix r o n to replace with one of the six suffixes if you are conjugating future subjunctive or future perfect subjunctive and first person plural place an accent mark on the final vowel before the suffix R-E-M-O-S here are the following conjugations for future subjunctive and for future perfect subjunctive. I hope that this lesson on Spanish indicative and on Spanish subjunctive will help you with your Spanish grammar and check out other resources about Spanish indicative and about Spanish subjunctive if you think that my lesson is full of misunderstanding.